Hey guys, Ben from RMB Reptiles. Just getting ready to make a video. Five tips to make your business more successful. Hey everybody, this is Ben from RMB Reptiles. I am uh, just making a little video about a few things I would have done differently coming into the business, knowing what I know now compared to when I first got in. Um, a little history is that Ryan was really the animal guy and I was a business guy and I didn't really like reptiles that much or not that I didn't like them I just wasn't really into them and uh, of course if you look at these guys you can tell that you just fall in love so um, a few things I would have done differently these are my top five things that I try to tell people uh, especially when you're first getting in number one is focus so focusing on the animals not uh, their health or anything like that I mean you do that but focusing on a project so if you're getting into ball pythons Pick something, a genetic that you really enjoy, that you really like, and, um, you know, go after it. And instead of uh, buying, you know, like a whole bunch of animals, which is what I did, and buying cheap animals um, just to try to get more snakes, focus on, you know, a project. Like if you're going to do uh, pides, then focus on pides. Do different genes in the pides, but keep pied in like everything to start off with. Um, this guy here is a pastel lori hidden gene woma and you can see is some really cool patterns it's definitely something that I really love um, which bring me to my second point is that when you buy things especially when you're starting off I suggest to people to always spend more money for less animals than to spend more money for more animals so instead of you know buying i don't know a pastel clown for um four or five hundred bucks whatever you're going to spend maybe try to get something else like a leopard pastel clown head something else like albino or clown head exanthic or something like that and spend the extra money save your money and spend it there rather than buying two or three animals for less money um, you'll get more bang for your buck in terms of being ahead of projects but also um, I think that you'll enjoy what you're getting a little bit more instead of waiting around for a couple years to try to produce what you're buying what you could buy today um, but this is a beautiful animal and then the next thing I'm gonna switch animals here next thing I would suggest for number three would be to plan your space yeah so plan your space um, when Ryan and I first started we did uh, we bought a few racks Ryan had a few racks and they're empty and something that always happens uh, to people especially with ball pythons is that you look at your racks and go oh man there's three empty bins I should probably fill them um, which Ryan always razzes me about all the time, like whenever we have empty bins. But um, definitely you need to make a plan because you have to start to understand that if you're breeding, especially if you're breeding, that these snakes can produce 6 to 12 eggs, maybe, maybe a couple more even. Um, and then you'll need baby racks and you'll need places to put these. And if you start running out of space, then your husbands or your wives or... Family members might not appreciate you putting racks in other rooms in the house. Um, <laughs> so you really need to plan out your space. And we always tell people that you need to, to purchase uh, the enclosures before you get the animals. That is something we did, but we didn't plan it out as big as we probably should have. We ended up buying racks um, a few at a time. And then we would get ourselves into situations where we're like, oh man, we need to buy a few more racks. Um, and you don't really want to be in that position where you aren't sure if you're going to have a rack in time, um, because sometimes you get, you know, backlog on some racks or you don't have time to go to a show or things like that. So planning a rack is definitely, uh, part of the deal. This girl here is our super Enchi Triton, which is super Enchi, obviously orange dream fire and pastel so she is a beauty which brings me to the 
third item on the list, which is stick with the things that you love. Um, I'm sorry, this is the fourth item. First item was project focus. Second item was more dollars per animal. <laughs> Third item was planning your space. And the fourth item, stick with what you love. Um, don't be wishy-washy. So this animal is something really cool that we really wanted to go after. Uh, a friend of ours named Limey, some of you may know him. He uh, sold us our first Triton, which we just love. And we really, I'm an I'm a Enchi guy. I really love Enchi. So that's a project that I really like to focus on. Um, a jean, so I like to have Enchi in a lot of stuff because um, I think it looks really good. And so when I'm producing things that have Enchi in it or I'm producing animals that are with the Triton, it's exciting. And it's, you know, an animal that I like to, to be passionate about. Now, there's other animals or other genes that you're like, these are cool, but they're not really my thing. If you get into those situations, I would suggest to um, really try to refocus and do the things you love. And the reason that I say that is because there's times, especially with any reptile, but also with ball pythons, where uh, there's dry spells almost, where maybe they aren't eating for a little while, or um, they just really aren't doing a whole lot that's in between breeding, there's, you know nothing going on and things can kind of get boring you're like man all i do is clean up after these animals and i'm not really getting anything out of it um when you have animals that you really are passionate about and genetics things like that and ball pythons that you're really passionate about um it makes it easier during those dry spells to say man this is such a good looking animal and every time it sheds um she's just more and more beautiful so that's number four is to stick with things that you love um in the beginning, I didn't really do that. Again, I was kind of just hitting anything that moved kind of deal. So <laughs> she's getting definitely busy body here. So I'm going to switch her out and go on to our fifth and final little decision here that I would have done differently when I first got involved. Come on. Is... <laughs> This little guy here. Whee. Diversify is the fifth one here. So diversifying what you have and what you're producing and what you're taking care of does a few things. One, it uh, gives you opportunity to get into markets that may be up or down. So if one market starts to dip a little bit, you know, a different market can help pull you back up, uh, possibly. Or also that you can produce things that um that are you know at different times so throughout the year maybe ball pythons have a season or maybe you don't have that many ball pythons and they have a season to where they're breeding and things are exciting you're having eggs and then there's a long gap between the next time you're having anything um we have blue tongue skinks we added and then we started getting into other things to diversify what we had blue tongue skinks you know they definitely have a season they breed once a, a year and um, it's kind of a different time than what our ball pythons do. We also do our ball pythons kind of all year round, but, um, but they have definitely a season. We also have uh, rhino rat snakes, which are fun. They produce a couple times a year. We have um, a bunch of different Asian rat snakes, and we also started getting into insects. We have tarantulas, and I know you guys should have seen in other videos, our millipede and our... Um, our scorpions, things like that, that are just fun and interesting to do. We also have anthill pythons, and we have, you know, we keep showing off the melanistic blue tongue skink, but we have easterns, and this is an eastern blue tongue skink. You know, so uh, they're pretty fun, and we have northerns and easterns at the moment. Hopefully, she doesn't pee or poop on me. They seem to like to do that. But uh, yeah, so. Uh, the things that I would suggest to people and what I try to tell people when they're getting into the, the hobby is, is those five things and those five elements that try to make you successful, but also to help keep that passion because that's, that's more the thing than anything. If you don't have the drive to do it or you don't have uh, the passion to do it, then it, things start to fall apart and it's hard to come back from that. So again, you focus on the animals, on the things that you really want to work with. So you stick to like one project in each type of animal or a couple projects if you want. Uh, but try to keep things consistent. Number two is to pay more dollars per animal than having uh, spreading the money thinner. 
so that you're buying more animals for the dollars because then you're not really you're not getting ahead of anything three plan your space make sure you have the right space the right enclosures um, a spot that you don't want to be in is outgrowing your space too quickly and realizing that the things you really want to get done or your maybe your back is up against the wall for something um, and you don't have the space for it so plan your space kind of ahead of time number four um, stick with what you love like different animals that really give you passion don't get wishy-washy we went through a, a time in the beginning where we were like oh man I don't know if this is really what we want to be doing and we kind of sold a bunch of animals and then we said man we probably should have kept a few of those so um, don't get wishy-washy stick with what you love that keeps the passion going uh, things that you really enjoy and uh, fifth diversify <laughs> I keep looking at my note fifth diversify so get into other stuff that you know you can spread your time with and don't count on just any one market but also um, help spread your passion around to different things and don't go outside of what you can handle so this little beauty here he's a she he she we haven't tried to breed her exactly yet so I'm gonna guess a female and uh, do what you love and stick with it so that's my two cents five points and I hope you guys have a great day and we look forward to seeing you again